Today we're going to start our probability unit and we're going to be talking about representing sample spaces. So the different ways that we can talk about all the outcomes when we're talking about our sample space. So the first example here, a sample space, that's an important term, I'd make sure you write that in your notes, of an experiment is a set of all possible outcomes. You can either do this, you can either represent a sample space by an organized list, a table, or a tree diagram. Okay, so when I flip a two, when I flip two coins, you flip a coin two times. Okay, so I have, or I can do heads, and then the second time be heads. We can, the first time can be heads, and the second time be tails. And then we can do tails and heads, and then tails and tails. Now this is an example of an organized list, and let me label that for you. A table. So um, I'm going to write it like this. So across the top, I should say, yeah, and across the side, you have all of your options. So across here, this is, I'm going to say is flip one. And then down here, that's flip two. So I have either heads or tails. My two options are heads or tails. So it's kind of like filling in this chart. So I could have flip one be heads and flip two be heads. Hey, that one's that one right there. And then I can have my first flip be tails and my second flip be heads. Tails, heads. And then I, I could have my first flip be heads, my second flip be tails. That's that one right there. And then our last one, let's see if I can come up with, I'll do that color. Um, we have our first flip is tails and our second flip is tails, so that one right there. So we have our tables here, we have our organized list, and then you have a tree diagram. So our tree diagram. Okay, so your first flip is heads. Or tails. Then after heads, your second flip can either be heads or it can be tails. So what's that result? That result is heads, heads. This result is heads and tails. Now we can have tails. Now our second flip is either heads or tails. So this one can be tails, heads. This one can be tails and tails. Okay. So that's your sample space in this case was your was all of these different outcomes. And for each of these, we had four different outcomes. So another way to do this, this is just another example. I'll do another example. Um, so I'm going to use red and then a black token. And a token is drawn and a color is recorded. Then it is returned to the back and a second is drawn. Um, a second draw is made. I apologize. Represent the sample space by using these three types. So an organized list. 
So an organized list in this case would be, I have my first pull is red, my second pull is red. My first pull is red, my second is black. Next, my first could be black and my second could be red. And then my first could be black and my second could be black. Very similar to heads and tails. So then your tree diagram, we could have red. And then red is gonna have two offshoots. We could have red and red, or we could have a red and then a black. Then we could have, our first one could be black. And then I could pull a black and a black, or I could pull black and a red. And remember that then my result here is red, red. My result there is red, black. Here, black, black, and then red, I'm sorry, black, then red. Now, again, your table very similar to what we did in the last example, okay? So you list your possible outcomes across in the first column and the first row. So my first column here, I can have either red or I can have black. Then each one in this row here, I could have red, and then I could have black. So again, we can have red and red. I could have a red and then a black, and then here I could have a red and a black, and then we could have black and black. And hopefully you see that each one of these is a different way for us to get all of our outcomes. And each one of these is gonna be meaningful to us in a different way. Okay, so a chef salad at a local restaurant comes with a French ranch or blue cheese. Okay, so I'm gonna abbreviate that French as F, ranch as R, and blue cheese is going to be B-E. And I've shown to toppings of cheese, turkey, or eggs. So I could have French. I had an abbreviation, then I just start writing it. I'm going to use F, ranch, and then blue cheese. I don't know why blue cheese. I said B-U, B-E. So for my French dressing, I can have cheese or I can't have cheese. Be careful on that one. I didn't think of that. Cheese or no cheese? Ranch. You could have cheese or no cheese. And then blue cheese, cheese or no cheese. And then for my cheese, I can go and I can have turkey or no turkey. And again, then having all of these different options. And I could continue in this way, and I'm not gonna lie, yeah, I could, but that's gonna waste some time in the video. And on my next slide, I have all of this set out, okay? So remember, I had French, ranch, or blue cheese. And then I went cheese, or no cheese in each one of those. Then I went turkey, not turkey, turkey, not turkey, and so on. And then I went eggs, no eggs. So I could have a French cheese, turkey, and no egg. Or I could have a blue cheese, no cheese, turkey, no egg. Okay, so this is how restaurants are gonna figure out how many different combinations they have. And we have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 options there. Okay, there's an easier way, I promise. So yeah, this is a really long way to write it out. I probably wouldn't have done that. I probably um, might have chosen an organized list. Or there's, honestly, there's an easier way. The fundamental counting principle. Okay, so the fundamental counting principle says, if there are N things, N items, M1 items, M2 items, and so on and so on and so on, um, all you have to do is multiply each number of items together. Okay, the number of options that you have for each one of these items. So revisiting that chef's salad, okay? I have French, ranch, or blue cheese dressing. I guess technically you could have no dressing, um, but that, the book didn't think that, and that's where I stole the example from. So I have three options for my dressing. I multiply that by my options of cheese. I have two options. I could have cheese, I could not use cheese. Then my options for turkey. I could have turkey, I could not have turkey. And then my options for eggs. I could have eggs, I could not have eggs. And so what you see here is you see if you multiply all those together, that's basically three times eight, you get 24. Okay, our next example, um, cars. And I actually, I like this example. There's actually a famous example I do in my algebra two class talking about Rocco's pizza. But anyway, we won't talk about food right now. We just talk about salads. Um, okay, so cars have a new, are, are available with a wide selection of options. One option is to be chosen from each category. So I have to choose each one of these. Okay, how many different cards could a consumer create to make for our make and model? Okay, so our exterior color, we have 11 choices. So 11, interior color, I have seven choices. You have to have every one of these. A seat material, the engine type, the type of computer navigation or GPS, the type of wheels we have, and the type of doors. So I multiply all those together, I would recommend the use of a calculator. And you get 83,160. Okay? So that's kind of our introduction of representing sample spaces and our fundamental theorem of calculus. Thanks for watching.